This here is a fire extinguisher I believe is full of carbon tetrachloride. I saw it on Gumtree for sale in an antique store. It cost me $55. Fairly sure it's full, I think. It's very hard to tell, to be honest. So it could not be all the way full. And I think it might be foaming a lot, so you can't, it's no obvious liquid sloshing around. But it's definitely quite heavy, so unless it is really thick walls, I think it's it's definitely got something inside it. It's really very interesting that it's got carbon tetrachloride in it, if it does, because carbon tetrachloride is virtually unobtainable these days. In Australia, it's illegal to import it, it's illegal to export it, it's illegal to transport it without a license. And these licenses are not very easy to get. In fact, um, I know my university has no carbon tetrachloride because they can't really get any. You can find these cylinders for sale, but they're all usually empty, so it's quite old. The reason I think it survived without being emptied is that someone has taken the label off. There used to be a big label on here. What I want to do is I want to, well, I want to know if there's some in here. So I'm going to attempt to empty some. All right, I'm going to have to look up a YouTube tutorial on how to use one of these. I don't know how it works. Ah, YouTube, what would I do without you? I thought there would be a video showing showing us how to do it, and there definitely was. Just turn the handle to the left, and then start pumping like a pump. So, turn the handle to the left, and this should then come out somehow. Bugger. Oh. Oh. Jesus Christ. Oh. It's probably another reason it survived all these years. No one can fucking open it. All right, I've given up trying to pull this out because I don't think I can. What instead, we're gonna aim for this. There's a little screw here. So we're gonna see what unscrewing this does. And we will attempt to open this, even though this is The metal's so soft, it's just eating away. Oh, Jesus. Come on. Oi, it's turning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It turned. Jesus. Oh, if this was a fire, I'd, I'd be dead right now. Yeah, boy. Alright, I wonder if I can pull this all the way out. Oh, that's a hole. Right, so we're in an <laughs> antique store on our day off. I've got my Geiger counter here. I love this, like, forbidden drinks. And we haven't found anything even mildly radioactive. But, look at this. I've been hunting one of these for, like, how long? Like a year and a half, Yeah, we, at least. we went to that antique store, like, two years ago. Two years ago, because we had one. I paid 70 bucks for it. And, because they said it was full. And, but they wouldn't let me open it in the store. So, I <laughs> yeah, because I was, like, went to open it. And they were like, please do not do that. Anyway, I bought it, and it was... And it was empty, but this one here. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll just go count some stuff. Okay, that is, yeah. That's good. That's full, yeah, so you can see. $35. Is it the same thing? It's the same thing, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> it's still a date.
still a date even if I film content. <laughs> Am I getting paid? Just hanging out with my uh, prized possession. You doing alright? I think they're doing alright. It's time to get the carbon tent out. Uh, it's been in the freezer for a little bit, so it's freezing cold. So that should help get it out of the cylinder without too much loss of the solvent. It's pretty darn heavy, so it makes me really think we've definitely... Yeah, you can hear that liquid in there, right? I do have a bit of a fear that as soon as I crack this open, it'll uh, start leaking from all different places because it's held together since, you know, the early 60s. But, you know, as soon as we open it slightly, it might all start gushing out. So I've got the container here, wearing the lab coat to protect my official Nile Red merchandise. So just like last time, there's a screw here uh, that we're just gonna undo there and then, and then pour it out. And I think that might be our best bet. Just like last time, the screw's pretty in. Pretty tight, bloody screw. I've never used carbon tet before, but I'm fairly sure this is carbon tet. Certainly smells weird. I'll just go change gloves. It's very slowly trickling out. It's very slow, but uh, I can't crack it open any other way. And I don't really want to hack it up too much, even though I kind of already have. Because ironically, even though the solvent in here is worth a lot of money, you can't sell the solvent, but you can resell the cylinder. It's probably worth about the same uh, empty as it is full, so uh, I might as well try and get my $35 back or something if I can keep this in good shape. We're gonna have to do a distillation. It's not coming out too much rusty anymore. The first bit was really rusty. Could have maybe ditched that and had the clean stuff, but we might as well just run a distillation. Check uh, that the boiling point's at the right place so we can confirm that it's carbon tetrachloride and also clean it up nicely. I had another go at trying to get that screw off, but I, I couldn't do it, so this is still the best way of getting the stuff out, although it's very slow. It's a drop every couple of seconds, so this is as much as I've managed to acquire over the last uh, two hours or so. Um, I hate to think how much I've lost through evaporation. I don't want to really want to think about it. Rather than waiting all day and then it gets dark, might as well start doing a bit of a distillation. So I don't want to get everything out of this tube and then distill all of it because I don't really have that much of a use for it. So I might as well keep most of it in the tube. It'll probably distill faster than it comes out of that tube. <laughs> oh. Look how fast it's coming over. Excellent. I wish every insulation ran this fast. Alright. And the temperature is 75. Excellent. That's exactly where we want. Perfect. Well, I'm not sure it's perfect, but it's, you know, within within error of the thermocouple and how fast we're heating it. So I really could have used a fractionating thing maybe, but that's okay. We're here. Very quick distillation. Done it. It is actually carbon tet. Someone didn't just get the 
cylinder and fill it full of rusty chloroform to try and deceive me. Um, <laughs> genuine 1962 carbon tet. Beautiful. All right, we're nearly at the end. Everything came over at the same temperature, so the whole thing is pure carbon tet minus the, the rust uh, that's coming through. But uh, yeah, it's distilling really well. I just turn it off now, turn off the heat. There should be enough heat to just distill that last little patch. Beautiful. This is a fucking dream. I love it. 79.3 grams of carbon tetrachloride. It's very slightly cloudy. It's probably not completely anhydrous in the cylinder. I don't see why they would make it completely anhydrous. Uh, it's, I mean, it's not too bad. Probably just a little bit of drying agent would clear that up if I ever needed it really dry. It is dense and it's noticeably dense. You pick that up and you're, you're surprised at how heavy that liquid is. So let me know in the comments what you want me to do with, you know, this solvent. And obviously I have the whole cylinders worth um <laughs> whether you want me to steal that all and, and and do something with it or do some chemistry with it i know there's some cool name reaction i've forgotten the names of obviously but uh, that use carbon tet as an actual reagent yeah anyway this feels immensely satisfying to me for a project i uh, i started a long while ago and it's always been in the back of my mind of something that I want to try and do but I couldn't do until I just had a little bit of luck. And All right, yeah, thanks for watching. Let me know ideas and um, I'll see you yeah, in another video sometime. Hopefully one that doesn't take me a couple years to make. So, <laughs> thank you.